Alright, so what we'll do is we go through some materials. I'm going to be doing basing first, I think, as I said before, just because the uh, the nid list isn't out yet. I know I'm going to need bases. We'll just go through a couple of materials that I use for making bases. This stuff is fantastic. It's a Sally's product called Knead It. There are a variety of different Knead It's you can get. Uh, I use the automotive or the general purpose one. It's a two-part putty. It stinks like a bitch and it is kind of toxic, but what it does is sets really, really fast. Um, so here on this base, all I've done is put a, just put a thin coat of knead it on top, basically just goo it up, smoosh it around a bit with your finger. Um, it hardens in under five minutes. It's rock hard. Obviously having a five minute curing time, you have to work with it fairly quick, so I'll generally do four or five bases worth with it at once. But it is fantastic, great for making basic shapes, and even not just flat shapes, doing all sorts of things. It's really good for making the basis of other objects. All right, so the knead it, obviously some green stuff. Green stuff's great. Oh, the other the other great thing about knead it, uh, when it is soft, it is really soft. It's basically like moulding with really sticky blue tack. Um, so it's good for organic shapes. I'll just show you one of these. So if you want to make dunes or something like that, it's very easy for just squishing around while it's setting. So back to green stuff. You should all know what green stuff is. Green stuff, again, is basically like blue tack when you're working it. It's great for organic shapes and those little nitty bits I showed you before, they're pretty much all green stuff. Recently I grabbed some of this Procreate putty, Ben Mosler again. Um, interesting properties the procreate different to green stuff much better for doing more solid shapes found it really good for clothing because it tends to crease a bit when you sculpt it now obviously you can brush it smooth um, or you know with a with a rounded tool um, you can smooth it off but i found it really good for doing clothing and just getting little organic creases and stuff in there not so great for the organic shapes like uh, tentacles or gooey slimy stuff but organic in terms of cloth fabric that sort of thing also good for just harder edged things and uh, just the way it comes it's easier to mix in different ratios if you want different effects from it the one problem I have with Procreate which isn't a huge issue I'm just gonna have to find something else to use um, green stuff you can put a bit of saliva on your tool and uh, the green stuff doesn't stick very well whereas I found with the Procreate putty saliva didn't really work as a lubricant very well so I'm gonna have to try some washing detergent or something like that I'll find something else to use so those, those are the basic putties that I use um, I'm quite liking the Procreate and when I get to doing some sculpting if I do these Ned Warriors I'll probably be using that first um, and then using the uh, green stuff as detailing this is texture paste great for doing uh, ice, fire, smoke misty effects, all sorts of stuff. Great stuff. I don't know how much I'll use it in the project, depending on which way I go. Various basing materials. Um, we'll start with commercial stuff. So Games Workshop make these little little basing kits. So this is their 40, from their 40k basing kit. You can get all this slate, various sizes of slate. I found this stuff really good. Um, obviously, you know, if you want to, you can go up and crush rocks, but I prefer to spend a few bucks and get some of that stuff. Now the other thing you get with these basing kits is these resin components, which really are only useful for 40k. They do sell a couple of different kits. Um, they sell a fantasy one of those, so you know, it's got a las gun on it, and you generally get a couple of each of these things. Tail heads and space marine helmet, you know, random cables. There's, you know, there's one with an ore specs, all that sort of stuff. Um, and you get a couple of tubs of those. Honestly, I don't think they're that great. They're kind of cool, and if you're just doing generic bases and don't have the time and just want to stick something to a base, like, go for your life. Um, this is a tub that I've made back in the day, JD1, in fact. There was this big thing about cutting sprue up to make urban bases. It was when City Fighter had come out and everyone was trying to, trying to think how to make urban rubble. So this is just trimmed up sprue. Looks fantastic when you paint it. Um, and this is some $2 shop, just grit stuff. So you just make your own tub of, you know, urban rubble. Um, but something you just do in front of the TV, just get some sprue and snip, snip, snip with a big pair of side cutters. Don't use your little modelling ones, you'll bust them. Gale Force 9 make a great range of train as well. Now, Games Workshop do have this sort of stuff. The pricing for the Gale Force 9 stuff is better, and I prefer the tubs as well. Um, so this is just some, you know, slate, your various sizes in there. It's just, you know, obviously some are smashed with a hammer. Um, you know, flock, that sort of thing. Gale Force 9 have a huge range of uh, different scenic stuff. Um, any army you're doing, they will have something that suits it, from ash waste to forest plants, like whatever, they have stuff. 
a bit of product placement again here. Anyone who's been to a tournament in the last little bit to an independent tournament in the last little while will probably have seen and quite likely have got some of these little sample kits from uh, from Realm Earth Legends, who are obviously the sponsor for this contest. Um, so this is one that I picked up at Intensicon. Um, these things people rave about. Uh, basically, it's little sticky tufts of tufts of grass. Um, in various little basic materials, some lichen, that sort of thing. Oh, the other thing you get in those GW kits, so this is again from the 40k one, is a bit of this uh, etched, brass etched stuff. Some of it's kind of cool. I mean, mesh, like, like you know, you can get a bit of, bit of high screen, it's going to give you the same effect. Um, and it's a bit of a shame where they've done this industrial flooring that it's probably hard to see on the camera. Um, but the little bits of industrial flooring are actually a killers. They're not, uh, they're not just little bits of this sort of industrial check that you'd expect. So they're not, not really able to be used generically. Again, the little cogs and stuff are kind of white bother to me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really a fan of this brass etch stuff at the best of times, but um, I guess if you're doing vehicles and stuff, and again, if you, if you don't have time to do your own things, they're kind of cool, but uh, not really for me. Now, we're going to talk about found objects a bit and just random stuff. So this is random bits of um, models, or even, you know, can, like these things, particularly road wheels, if you're converting a vehicle or something, you need extra wheels. 48 mil or 45 scale, 35, 45 scale model kits, fantastic. Um, any, any hobby shop that sells historical sort of, you know, standard Revel model kits and whatever, is going to have some of this sort of shit lying around. So this is, these are uh, 45, 145 scale, I think. Um, Great little boxes, barrels, crates, all that sort of stuff. Uh, again, you can see on some of these bases. So here, for example, got a bed roll, which is a bit big. It's from a different kit, but we'll make just a great, you know, bedding or something lying on the ground. You know, a couple of boxes, cut down barrels, stuff like that. So these things are cheap. They're you know, 10, 15 bucks, you know, you've got your barrels, but particularly if you're doing armoured companies and stuff as well, or if you want to do some industrial type terrain, like getting the gas cans and all that sort of stuff, 135, I think these are, which honestly I think are too big, they'll look fine on tanks, but you see they're like the barrels are, are huge, if I grab, I don't know, here's an old Rogue Trader Marine, see the barrels as big as he is, so they'll, they'll be useful for something, but not really for just sitting next to model, they have to be more, you know, huge storage drums or something. And here's the cool one, so this is all from toys as well, stuff I pulled out, another one I want to focus on here is cogs, cogs are great, it's hard to get cogs, you want to buy cogs online, they're expensive, all the steampunk fans buy all the cool cogs, but these are just from $2 shop toys, all those wind up toys are things you push or pull back, they are full of cogs. So anything like that you've got lying around, if you can throw it out, pull the cogs and stuff out first. Um, another good source of crap, which I don't have any of on the bench at the moment, is computer transformers, power, power, power supplies out of computers. A great supply of just random, cool-looking technical stuff. And, of course, just random bits from, from uh, GW kits and stuff as well. That's the branches from a dryad. Like makes a fine tree. All that's going to do, we should come over here and have our sneaky product placement again for our sponsor. Um, I think we're done. Oh, we're not done. There's some other stuff we'll go through. Of course, glue. Got a glue. PVA. PVA dirt cheap. Do not buy the cheapest $2 shop PVA you can. Do yourself a favour. Go to at least a big box store, a big W Target or something, or a hardware store. Buy some proper wood glue, because shit glue is shit. With some gloss varnish in case you need to make anything shiny. Obviously some spray. I use your white knights. Someone was saying recently the white knights don't make a flat white. Fibs and lies. They do make a flat white. They made a flat white for years. And this is a new toy that I picked up recently. This is some glass coat picked up from Bunnings. I think this size, I think these are 15 or 20 bucks. Um, they do a pretty decent area. And they will make decent water effects. And of course totally flaked on this good set of plastic card different thicknesses of plastic card and just plastic tubing and stuff some corner some eye beam all sorts of stuff in there i've just bought a whole lot of different stuff and, and melded them together now this stuff's not particularly cheap either but it is great so particularly if you've got friends who are doing anything like that <clears throat> maybe do a bit of a co-op and get a variety of stuff and share them out amongst yourselves um i think that's going to do again a bit of subtle product placement See how subtle that is? Absolutely subtle product placement. All right, that really is going to do it for now. I'll leave it there. Uh, have a good time, and uh, I'll be back when I actually start building some bases.